Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Monday, April 12th, 2021. And I forgot to hit my reverse button, so that looks backwards. But again, we're still following the Ignatian Workout for Lent by Tim Muldoon. And we have a few more... Um, uh, a few more things to do, and then we should be good. We should be done with this, and we're going to move on to... Um, I'm going to do the little devotion I got from Randy Elkhorn's book, Heaven, and it talks about frequently asked questions about heaven. So I thought we'd do that for a little bit, then I'll find another devotion. So, exercise 34 is the road to Emmaus. On the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. By the way, you can find this in Luke, I'm assuming. Yes. Luke 24, 13, 15 through 17, 19 through 23, and 25 through 32. Or just read Luke 24, 1 through 42. On the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you have walked along? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be committed to death and crucified him. But we have hoped that he we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yet, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of hearts to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures that were fulfilled. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? So Tim writes, The disciples' rhetorical question at the end of this story is not only a key to what they experienced when they encountered Jesus, but also a commentary on the whole of the spiritual life. Were not our hearts burning within us, they asked, remembering that during most of their encounter with Jesus, they did not know it was him until almost after the fact. Our lives are like that. We go from one experience to the other, unmindful of Jesus' presence with us. Until, if we pay attention, the moment of crystal clarity when all of our previous experiences make sense. The keys, of course, the key, of course, is awareness of how our own hearts are burning within us. So that's interesting because when I was in seminary, they had us do a Look back at your life, starting from when you can remember, when you were young, childhood, adolescence, graduating high school, um, if you went to college, graduating college, um, young adulthood. Um, <coughs> oh my, excuse me, my allergies are kicking up. Um, if you were proposed to when you got married, when you had your first child, that kind of thing. And when you look back, you can see how Jesus is present in your life, walking through with you during all of those experiences, good or bad. And so it's helpful to do that. So you kind of break your life up into those sections and look back upon it. And you can see all the cool, um, all the cool God winks, God moments when Jesus was near. Actually, he's always near, but when you actually look at it and you can see that he was. So prayer today is take time today and every day to pay attention to the movements within your heart. What causes you to feel something? Longing, anger, sadness, indignation, happiness, consolation, lethar lethar lethargy. That's not how you say it. <laughs> Lethargic. When have you felt your own heart burning within you? Bring these feelings right into your prayer. Now for the last 12 years I've been journaling and so it's kind of cool to go back and read those journals from, you know, eight, nine years ago when, you know, things were rough or whatever. 
and how God answered those prayers. That's another cool thing that you can do. Action. If you are in consolation, act with resolve. Sounds like a Catholic thing. Knowing that desolation will come again one day. That's really happy. So I would say is if you're in a time of struggle, I'll put it <laughs> into Protestant terms. If you're in time of struggle, um, know and stop. Know that God is with you. Stop. Look for the God times. Look for the God moments. Look for God's hand in the situation. And knowing that the resolve will come soon. If you, um, let's see, whatever it says. Um, stay on the road and invite Jesus to journey with you. So stay on the road. Often it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're not talking about dead. We're talking about valley times in our lives. So it, the psalmist David writes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, your word and your Holy Spirit are with me and journey along with me. So remember that. Look back at your life and see where God has been working in your life. And then watch today how he works in your life. And then write it down. And then pray and give thanks to God. And if you don't feel like he's with you, just ask him to show you that he is. And you'll get some kind of confirmation. Maybe not exactly today, but within a certain period of time, I'm sure. Um, so we're going to do about five more days of this, and then we'll move on to <clears throat> frequently asked questions about heaven. And we'll use Randy Elkhorn's little book. I have a copy of it somewhere. And you don't have to buy that. We'll just go through some of the questions and do that for, I think it's like maybe 10 questions or something. And then we'll find another devotional. And I'll give you plenty of time to see if you want to buy it. Until then, I will see you tomorrow. So have a good day. Bye-bye.